So, I built a web free social media that runs on the blockchain. Let me explain. January 22, I wrote a post to the ETH Dev subreddit on the launch of a decentralized social media that runs on the blockchain. Imagine a site just like Reddit, but with the native advantages of Web3. Meaning not only do we have the existing features such as the UI, the social feed, and the ability to join different communities, but given that this social media is on Web3, users can earn directly on the content they post, or even tip creators they support. I mean, imagine a social media site with a native built-in payment system, where users in the subreddit can choose to freelance and can be paid directly in ETH without a bank or a middleman, handled through smart contracts. And as a user, if you want to join, no need for emails or signups, you can join with a simple connect of a wallet. Well, this video is how I created a social media app like Reddit, but on Web3, how it works, and honestly, the ethics of a censorship-free Web3 social media. This video is going to be different from the others. Hi, my name is Eben, nice to see you. Consider dropping a like or leaving a comment for the algorithm. And well, let's begin. Now, building a social network isn't an easy task. And although different platforms gain mass adoption for many reasons, such as the network effect, one thing that all these social networks have in common is that they tend to have bought something new, innovative or novel that provide the users the ability to express creativity or spread information in one form or another. Whether being the likes of Snapchat stories that are set to disappear, Twitter's initial 140 character limit, or even Vine's seven second videos. These features provided a new outlet for users of the platform to express the way they produce or even consume content. With that in mind, I had one question. What does a social network on Web3 look like? So late 2021, I wanted to answer that question and developed a social site. Now fast forward to January 2022, I wrote a post to the ETH Dev subreddit community on the launch of a Web3 social media site that ran directly on the blockchain. The initial thoughts of the prototype was positive and some of the feedback mentioned in the comments was even implemented, so thank you. However, being a single developer building a production-ready social network isn't exactly scalable. Plus, I was working on a few other projects at that time. However, over the months, the idea of a social media application, which is fully open source, where there's no central entity, whereby developers and users can fully maintain, really started to grow on me. I mean, the idea where users can transparently view the code that builds a social network, suggest new features, or even vote on DAO proposals for merging new features, sounds pretty interesting. No opaque algorithms or centralized moderators, just a set of rules defined in a smart contract. Pair this with an active self-moderating community and a web-free social media may just work. So you may already have a ton of questions and this is one of those videos I recommend you watch to the end as your question may be answered as well as we'll be pointing out the technical limitations and is it even a good idea to have a social media app exist on Web3 in the first place. The following is possibly one of the earliest decentralized social media platforms running on the Ethereum blockchain directly on layer one. This means that there is no centralized database or server host in the backend. The whole backend logic runs on a smart contract deployed on chain. So how does it work? Well, in order to understand what a Web3 social network is, let's first discuss the Web3 architecture. The social media platform we're developing can be categorized as a DAP, which stands for a decentralized app. In summary, this means that the backend logic that would have normally been stored by a corporation, such as the server and the database, is instead deployed as a smart contract. Now, if this is something new to you, I recommend you watch the previous video to get a context and the background on all you need to know on Web3, which covers the architecture in more detail. Decentralized apps are something relatively new and interesting. You may have come across one if you've seen a Connect Wallet UI. A famous example is Uniswap. Now, Uniswap is an example of a decentralized app in finance. But the question is, what does a social network look as a decentralized app? Well, before we get to that, it's important to understand the problems we're solving, the issues. For the sake of providing a baseline definition, a social network can be defined as a dedicated website or other application, which enables users to communicate with each other, 
by posting information, comments, messages, images, etc. Now, although there are some differences between a social network and a social media, for the purpose of this video, we'll be using these terms interchangeably. For better or worse, social media apps have done a lot in terms of connecting us together. Let's look at Reddit for example. Reddit is known as the front page of the internet, a site filled with various online forums known as subreddits, where you can dive into any topic ranging from your personal interests to your passions or even learning a new skill or trade. Reddit is home to millions of active users from across the world. However, as interesting as Reddit is to deliver content and information, it does have a few issues listed here. And we've all seen the infamous examples of centralized moderators censoring posts taking a top-down approach, in effect acting as the gatekeeper of information. So what are we solving? The goal of this social media decentralized app is to answer the following questions. Can a user benefit from a web-free social media platform that has the same features as Reddit, but with the additional advantages of solving the previous mentioned problems above with Web3. <sighs> okay, that's the context out of the way. Well, let's actually show it. So after developing the front-end web app in React and the back-end in Solidity, which you can view how the development stack works here, and figuring out a name, here it is, JoinSpace. JoinSpace is a decentralized social media application running on the Ethereum network. Creators can earn tokens and can be tipped ETH by creating quality content and contributing to the larger space ecosystem, supporting content such as text, images, or even videos. Like Reddit, JoinSpace is a network of communities where people can dive into their interests, hobbies, and passions. JoinSpace is broken into many communities known as subspaces whereby each subspace covers a different topic. How JoinSpace works. Like Reddit, JoinSpace retains the main functionalities native to Reddit, such as the upvotes and comments. But JoinSpace also implements new features that are only possible with Web3, such as awarding users ETH or tokenized karma points. Okay, for the rest of the video, we'll be using the main issues that we've addressed in Web 2.0 and evaluate how a Web 3.0 social media app can solve or at least alleviate some of these issues. Starting off with how do we identify bad actors and bots? Introducing the credibility score. JoinSpace attempts to solve issues such as bad actors and bots and recycled content by implementing the user credit rating. The user credit rating, or for short, UCR, allows users to view the credibility of the overall user in question. Similar to Reddit's Karma points, the user rating helps identify quality creators and expose bad actors trying to exploit the dApp. So how does this work? Similar to Reddit, on JoinSpace, a user can create a post, either a text, image, or a video, and once it's uploaded, by default, each post has a net vote of one whereby net votes is the difference between the upvotes and downvotes. And these upvotes and downvotes are decided by other users who can vote on this specific post once. When a user upvotes another person's content, the net vote increases by one, as a result increasing the user's credibility. And the opposite also holds true. When a user downvotes another person's post, the net vote decreases by one, as a result the user credibility decreases. The higher the score of the accumulated points, the higher the post shows on the feed and the higher the credibility of that user goes up because the creator of the post is deemed by the community to be a valuable contributor based on the upvotes to downvotes ratio. And this also works the opposite. If a posted content netvote drops below minus two, the content posted is no longer visible on the UI, only visible on chain. As a result, the creator's credit rating subsequently drops to reflect the negative performance of their content creation. And users with a historically bad user credit rating, their posts will simply not be shown on the UI. Here's an example of the UCR rating tiers. The idea of the user credit rating helps prevent bad actors from posting offensive content and helps filter out low effort posters and recycle content. And as a result, the community regulates itself meaning all powers democratize amongst the users 
through a simple voting system logged on the blockchain. This means that censorship is handled by the community, not the devs or the company that manages it. And the upvoted score on a post can be calculated by this formula. Now, it should be mentioned that content such as images and videos are not stored on chain, but these are stored on a decentralized storage like IPFS, whereby the CID hash, which you can think of as the URL pointing to the file, is stored on the smart contract. And this theory is also explained in the previous video too. And this is similar to how NFTs work. Now, the second point is creators do not have the ability to earn on the content. And this is probably one of the most powerful features of a web-free social media, the idea of a native inbuilt payment system. So on top of the native features known to Reddit, such as upvotes and karma, JoinSpace provides the additional benefit of earning ETH-based tips and token rewards for the content the community finds useful. For example, I've literally got a job post where if anyone can design a logo for JoinSpace, they will get 0.1 ETH. This is test ETH, by the way. Like a job post forum, users can post a job and be paid directly to their wallet without a bank, all done within the social media dApp. And this perfectly leads to why it's called Join Space. Create a community. When we look at Reddit, Reddit represents a series of online communities categorized by subreddits. Now, similar to the r slash subreddit prefix, a subspace has a prefix of s slash, symbolizing a community where users can post and discuss topics based on a particular subject. For example, s slash investing is a place where investors or DGENs can meet and talk all about investing. Or, users can join and search for a job and be paid all within the subspace within the s slash web3 jobs economy, which is also a subspace. And users with a high enough credibility can gain the ability to create their own community or space, meaning that the creator of the community owns a digital space on the blockchain. And this is where the term join space comes from, as you can join any space. If it doesn't exist, create one. These subspaces slash communities literally exist on the blockchain. These are immutable spaces that a wallet address owns, meaning these spaces are censorship resistant. But we'll talk more about that later. Earn tokens, tokenize karma points. Now, similar to karma points in Reddit, which is what a user earns when another user upvotes a post or comment. The karma points within join space exist as a token this is a native ERC20 token called Space, and it can be used within the dApp, as well as it can be traded just like any other crypto token, with these tokens hopefully having some level of utility behind it. So how does it work? In the case of token rewards, the smart contracts acts as a reserve and holds a proportion of the tokens. And based on the number of upvotes provided by a community, a certain proportion of tokens will be awarded by the smart contract to that content creator. In effect, we've implemented a tokenized version of Reddit's karma, meaning you can earn tokens and build a reputation based on what others in the community find useful. Oh, and also a side note, if you're interested in the joint space development stack and how it was built, for example, the front end and the back end, I wrote an article on the joint space development stack and how it works in the description below. And now for the biggest question that you may have in your mind. Trust and reputation. How is content moderated? The biggest difference between Reddit being a Web2 platform and JoinSpace being a Web3 platform is how content moderation is handled. And this is a really important subject. Unlike Reddit, that takes a centralized moderator approach, whereby a select few have super privileges to moderate over a subreddit, JoinSpace takes the approach of decentralized moderation. As in, there is no single entity or mod that has permanent elevated roles. So how does it work? The smart contract appoints moderators by randomly selecting wallet addresses who have interacted with the smart contract and giving them the option to accept a role of moderating content, whereby they'll be compensated in space tokens for their work. As a result, no single entity has control over moderation or it will be difficult for a coordinated group to take control of the site as moderation is temporary. 
These appointed mods would eventually lose moderation powers after a set period of time and would return to being a regular wallet or a user. And the process will repeat again for the next batch of moderators appointed by the smart contracts. We can call this some form of jury duty. Given that content moderation is decentralized and anyone can become a moderator, the community ideally self-governs itself. And this is an idea that's still being developed, so it does still have some holes. But let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas, suggestions or improvements on how moderation should work. And now for the elephant in the room, bad actors. Now hear me out. The good thing about a web-free social media decentralized app is that it's censorship resistant. Theoretically, anyone can post. The bad thing about a decentralized social media decentralized app is that theoretically, anyone can post. And the biggest problem in this scenario is where a group of bad actors come together to create a harmful community. And as a way to mitigate potential bad actors creating harmful communities, the smart contract would require the users to meet these following requirements. And also there is another idea that may work whereby the creator of the community has to own some stake in that community. In this idea, in order to create a community, a community leader would be required to deposit ETH as collateral in a smart contract to incentivize good behavior. And any reports of harmful content from other users would be sent to the decentralized mods for decision making. And some of the ETH that was held as collateral by the community founder would be used to cover any gas fees made by the reporter. And in this case, the decision is handled by the decentralized moderator panel that was mentioned earlier, the jury duty. Now, this may not be a perfect solution. If you have any innovative ideas that can incentivize good behavior and penalize bad actors, please leave a comment below. It will be great to form a discussion behind this, or you can join the Discord or the live stream and we can brainstorm together. Now, this solution of collateral ETH reduces the likeliness of bad actors running bot farms or creating multiple wallets. As to do this, it will get very expensive very quickly. And these bots won't even be able to reach the requirements to do so. As a result, reducing the likeliness of DDoS attacks on the site. Now, JoinSpace has been deployed to the Ethereum Robston test network. And you can view the smart contract in the description below. Now, JoinSpace is an ongoing developing project with the goal of actually being a viable social media dApp focused on user creation on the Ethereum network. And now we've reached the current technical limitations of a web-free social media, high gas fees and scalability. Although JoinSpace is running entirely on chain, making it fully decentralized, this comes at a cost. Given that JoinSpace is directly interacting with layer one, each action such as a post or upvote requires a transaction to be made on the blockchain. Meaning each write we do to the smart contract is a transaction and this requires gas fees. Now there are other web free projects out there that have implemented a social element. However, not on layer one, which actually might be the right idea. For example, Orbeez.club which seems to be the Twitter version of Web3. And this may be something worth exploring. Conclusion. So this comes back to the original thought. Would join space benefit being a fully decentralized open source repo? As it will be quite interesting to make the front end open source whereby devs can contribute. For example, making it more interactive, support and mobile, which will realize the goal of a fully transparent social network. Let me know in the comments if you'd like the idea of making this open source where other devs can contribute. The only thing here is I'll need to revisit and rewrite the front end code base to make it open source, which would also include using TypeScript and provide a Gitbook documentation, which could be a task in and of itself. So judging by the reception of the idea, this will be something I'll be happy looking into doing. The goal of this video is to show how a web free social media works with an actual prototype that you can also interact with and more importantly the systems that can be put in place to allow moderation as well as keeping it true to the decentralized nature and in the larger picture the ethics of a decentralized social media now there are still a lot of technical limitations based on what the blockchain can do 
And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Criticize it, break it apart. This is the only way we can find out if this is going to be an actual viable solution. The idea of a web-free social network is something inevitable. The real question is, how would it be implemented to empower the user while keeping safety? And that is a whole nother question. Well, let's discuss this in the comments below or join the Discord or even reach out on Twitter. So some afterthoughts. Maybe this model may not fit a fast paced social network and may be better off used in areas such as academia and research papers where articles are submitted for peer review. The peer review nature is something that the decentralized moderator approach can fit. But curious to know your thoughts. If you found this interesting, consider leaving a like or dropping a comment below. Thanks for watching. My name is Eben. You stay awesome. Peace.